Let's have a look into the future with award-winning futurist, researcher, and keynote speaker Nicholas Batminton on Canada Now. And Nick, this time around, let's have a look at facial recognition tech and human rights. And you believe, if used properly, it'll be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, facial facial recognition has been under development for, for, for a good couple of decades at this point, and now we're at the point where we have the hardware, the software, the camera technology to, to really make it work perfectly. But we're also at a, a, a point, a nexus of discussion around, you know, what's a good use of this technology and where do human rights lie in that in that situation? I mean, if it's all in the name of uh, protecting citizens and uh, making sure that we're all safe uh, and secure, absolutely. But if used improperly, we could be looking at widespread monitoring of a population. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think it's very, very basic. If, if you do put it in a city and it, and it does follow everyone around uh, in, in that city and, and can recognize what they're doing, it is widespread, surve- widespread surveillance. Now, if it's got a very um, narrow use case, then that's fine. But like, where do you draw the boundaries of when it, when it needs to look and when it doesn't need to look? And, and that's the problem that we're really uh, struggling to solve right now because there's no way to just to turn it on when there's danger and turn it off when there's not because uh you know danger's everywhere right so uh that's why we've got this mass surveillance and widespread usage and uh it's a real problem as far as you know um, is that happening already uh like in china uh government just uh, trying to keep people in line <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So in China, they've uh, they're starting to roll out the social credit system where if you, if you're caught doing jaywalking or behaving improperly, smoking somewhere you shouldn't, spitting on the street, whatever, you get points deducted from your social credit score, and, and they can restrict movements of where you can go and travel and whatever. So it's already happening, but it's happening in a more authoritarian sense. There, I mean, I grew up in the UK. I spent a lot of years working in London. I you know I've sort of escaped two bomb blasts in the time that I spent there, and it was because of uh, because of terrorism, right? And uh, so I actually think that, you know, it's places like London, it's gone from CCTV to facial recognition. I think it's a good thing. But again, it, it's like a dragnet. We, we catch everyone's movements and everyone's faces. But like, where, where, where do we stop capturing the data? And where do we stop um, using that data for intelligence, right? Well, it's, it's pretty scary, uh, like what's, what's happening in China. Back on, what, September 27th, just a couple of months ago, Telecom carriers uh, there started uh, starting in December must scan the face of anyone applying for mobile and internet service using facial recognition technology. The companies will verify that the applicant is indeed the owner of a valid ID. Meanwhile, the Hong Kong government invoked emergency powers on October 4th to ban demonstrators from wearing face masks. They want your information. They want to be able to recognize you right away. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so here lies the debate, right? Now, when's it a good usage? When's it not a good usage? I mean, for me, I'd love to walk through airport security, you know, check into flights and have ease of travel, buying goods and whatever. Using, using facial recognition, I think that's great. But I think this widespread monitoring and sort of, you know, authoritarian dictatorship governments are sort of really starting to, to, to break down our digital rights and our human rights, right? And there's no difference between those two things these days. Well, the other end of the spectrum, uh, though Portland, Maine, has embraced the so-called smart city technology, they're looking at banning facial recognition technology altogether. <clears throat> Yeah, and you know what? That's not a bad thing, and I think it's a choice. I think we, we have to get everyone on board that, you know, this is going to work for the individual, the citizen, as well as it's going to work for the government, intelligence services, police, and whoever. And uh, that's an uphill battle. I mean, if we can actually work out a, a way of operating or new ways for this technology to operate in a way where you can protect the rights of, of humans, then I think that that's the holy grail with regards to this technology and citizen rights. California lawmakers, uh, Nick, passed uh, a bill placing a three-year statewide moratorium on the use of facial recognition technology by law enforcement agencies. Would police officers have been able to gain information that years ago, like only a search warrant, uh, could have obtained? 
Well, you know, you, you'll be able to, if you've got high-definition cameras in their scanning streets, they'll be able to know your, your absolute movements without having to track cell phone or anything like that. So it'd be almost impossible to, to really get away from that. So really, the movement data, um, where, you know, what buildings you go in, into, what buildings you walk past, you know, the actions that you undertake could be captured. That's an incredibly rich source of data. Um, and, and there's a lot of surveillance technologies that, that can, you know, even use like satellites and whatever. But facial recognition is like, yeah, that's absolutely who that individual is. That looks suspicious or they shouldn't be in that place at that point in time. And then it becomes admissible evidence in court, right? So it ends up being a sort of a very powerful tool for the police, but it can also be... It can also be uh, subject to debate as whether that data is truly representative of a person's actions as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's where the the, the data ends up because we've talked in the past about uh, the, the technology one day where we we walk into a mall, we're uh, facially recognized, we're walking by places where advertisements are. They are um, they are they, they begin to advertise things that are tailored to your uh, your buying habits. You know, on one hand, hey, I mean, you're you're spoon feeding me what I what I would like, and I appreciate that. But on the other hand, uh, it's it's kind of Big Brotherish. And on top of that, uh, I I don't like knowing that you, I don't like someone knowing where I am. Yeah, absolutely. It's like someone walking into a party that you don't know and walking up to you and going, "Hey, Jeff, how are you?" Mm. And then telling you a bunch of information about your life, and it's like. Excuse me? Uh, that's very, very confusing, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's never happened to me before because nobody's ever taken an interest. Check out NicholasBadminton.com. Uh, Futurist researcher, keynote speaker, Nicholas Badminton. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks for this. Thank you so much.